please remain standing for the presentation of the colors by the New Hanover High School ROTC under the leadership of Lieutenant Colonel Mark Kaffer. The national anthem will be sung by Laurie Kelly. Gentlemen, please remove your caps for the singing of the national anthem. Good morning. Good morning. Please be seated. Graduates, parents, Isaac Bear Early College faculty and staff, members of the New Hanover County School Board, senior staff from New Hanover County Schools, and UNCW faculty and administration. We would like to welcome you to the 7th Isaac Bear Early College High School Commencement Ceremony. This is a very special ceremony for an incredible group of students who have worked hard to fulfill their goals for high school and college scholarship. We ask that you please maintain the dignity of this ceremony by allowing everyone to hear the comments made and the individual names called. Please silence all cell phones at this time. Again, we welcome each of you to this ceremony celebrating the Isaac Bear Early College High School graduating class of 2016. I am pleased at this time to introduce Maya Danielle Vexler. Maya will be attending the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill in the fall. Good morning. It is my privilege to introduce the platform guest for the 2016 commencement ceremony of Isaac Bear Early College High School. From New Hanover County Schools, Dr. Tim Markley, Superintendent of New Hanover County Schools, Dr. Rick Holliday, Deputy Superintendent of New Hanover County Schools, Dr. LaShawn Smith, Assistant Superintendent, Instruction and Academic Accountability, Dr. John Wellmers, Assistant Superintendent, Human Resources, Mr. George W. Hans, Jr., Assistant Superintendent of Planning and Operations, Ms. Don Brinson, Chief Technology Officer, Ms. Valita Quattlebaum, Chief Communications Officer. Ms. Mary Hazel Small, Chief Financial Officer. From the New Hanover County Schools Board of Education, Donald S. Hayes, Board Chairman. Jeanette S. Nichols, Board Vice Chair. Janice A. Cavanaugh, Board Member. Tammy J. Koval, Board Member. Lisa E. Stepp, Board Member. Edward B. Higgins, Jr., Esquire. Board member, Bruce T. Shell, board member, and from the University of North Carolina Wilmington, Dr. Jose V. Sartorelli, Chancellor, Dr. Marilyn Shearer, Provost and Vice Chancellor for Academic Affairs, Dr. Paul Townend, Associate Vice Chancellor and Dean of Undergraduate Studies, Dr. Kathy Barlow, Interim Vice Provost and Senior Associate Vice Chancellor, and Dr. Keisha Bennett Smith, Director, Early College Program.
Please welcome Hannah Faircloth and Patrick Saki to the, come to the podium for the presentation of the senior class gift. Hannah is the recipient of the State Employees Credit Union People Helping People Scholarship in the amount of $5,000. Hannah will be attending the University of North Carolina Wilmington in the fall. Patrick will be attending Cape Fear Community, Community College in the fall. At this time, we would like to invite our principal, Ms. Bell, to come forward and accept our class gift. Ms. Bell, the Isaac Burr Early College Class of 2016 would like to present you with our class gift, a photo of the future Isaac Bear Spirit Rock. Go, Go Bearhawks! <laughs> On behalf of the class of 2016, we are happy to present this gift as a token of our appreciation and demonstrate our belief that the most important lesson in improving the world is in our ability to help our fellow man. We would like to thank our parents and guardians for their generous donations in making this gift possible. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It is a time-honored tradition to sing at graduation to commemorate the momentous milestone in the life of the high school graduate. We are honored today to have a group of Isaac Bear students perform to honor the graduating class of 2016. Please welcome the spirit of Isaac Bear as they perform Vienna by Billy Joel and Home by Philip Phillips.
next song is, is Home by Philip Phillips. Hold on to me as we go, as we roll down this unfamiliar road. And although this way Congratulations, class of 2016. At this time, I would like to ask Ms. Jeanette Nichols, Vice Chairman of the New Hanover County Schools Board of Education, to come forward to make a scholarship presentation. Good morning. New Hanover County Schools always hires the best. The best teachers, as evident with our teachers here from Isaac Bear. And we started thinking, we better start growing our own. And so with the encouragement of Dr. Markley and the support of the County Commission, we established four scholarships a full scholarship for four years of college at 28,000 per student. So at this time, I'd like to have the person that represents Isaac Beer to come forward so when I talk about her, you can see why we chose Casey White. All the applicants had to have great scores, so we put a check mark in Casey's box for great scores. All the applicants had to have school involvement, so we put a check by that for Casey. They had to have community service, Casey did. They had to have a great reference, so Casey had everything, but so did all the other applicants. But what made the difference 
was when we interviewed the candidates and they came before a very serious panel of board members. And when Casey came in, she came with such confidence. But the thing that gave her that special check in her box as one of the four recipients was that she had passion. We knew that she is truly committed to be a teacher. So I'd like for you to recognize our future teacher that's going to come back in four years and maybe even work at Isaac Bear. Well, it's not work, it's great. Please join me in recognizing those students who have earned grade point averages of distinction and honor. These distinctions align with our early college model and reflect honors granted at the university level. Ten of you wearing platinum and teal cords have met the 3.95 to 4.14 weighted GPA, distinction to receive the Latin honor of cum laude, meaning with praise or honor. Two of you wearing bronze and teal cords have met the 4.15 to 4.24 weighted GPA, distinction to receive the Latin honor of magna cum laude, meaning with great honor. And 14 of you wearing gold and teal cords have met the GPA requirement of 4.25 or higher to hold the highest Latin distinction of summa cum laude, or with highest honor. Please join me in recognizing students receiving Latin honors with a round of applause. At this time, I'd like to recognize the 10 students with the highest grade point averages in the class of 2016. Students, as I call your names in descending order, please come to the stage to be recognized and form a line on my left. Nancy Parada, 4.4545 Cape Fear Community College. Gabriella Despain, 4.4865, the University of North Carolina at Wilmington. <laughs> Michael Deeney, 4.5135, the University of South Carolina. Mia Grace DiCarlo, 4.5588, Appalachian State University. <laughs> Alvina Young, the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill, 4.6579. Morgan Wilson, 4.7297, the University of North Carolina at Wilmington. <laughs> Sarah Katz, 4.8205, Wingate University. <laughs> Maya Vexler, 4.8611, the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill.
Aaron Johnson, 4.8649, East Carolina University. Adam Khatib, 5.075, Cornell University. Let's give these students a well-deserved round of applause. I would like to introduce the student who earned the second highest overall GPA of 4.8649, Aaron Michael Johnson. Aaron, please come forward. With this GPA, Aaron has earned the honor of salutatorian. With this, he will be attending East Carolina University and is a recipient of the East Carolina Honors College Scholarship as well as the East Carolina Scholars Award. I present to you Aaron Michael Johnson, salutatorian for the graduating class of 2016. Good morning, distinguished faculty, administrators, friends, family, and the graduating class of 2016. I would like to thank you all for joining us for this momentous occasion. Today we gather to celebrate the completion of the Isaac Bear Early College curriculum by our senior cohort. We celebrate the years of diligent effort put forth that have allowed each of us to be here today. We celebrate the family, friends, faculty, and staff who have helped each of us along the way. In short, we celebrate the end of an age. Or, in the terms of a geological timeline, we can compare our time at Isaac Bear to an eon, the Isaac Bear Eon. The end of an eon brings a new beginning for most, a fresh start with new faces and opportunities. But what do we bring with us on this grand adventure, this venture into a new age? What has shaped our view of the world, influenced our life decisions and opinions, and led us to grow into who we are today? Could it be the environment we were nurtured in for four years? Could it be the classmates with whom we have learned, bonded, and grown up alongside? Or could it be our teachers, who introduced a wealth of new ideas prodded us continuously to use our brains, and provided repeated opportunity for memorable experiences. Whichever is true, there is no doubt that our time together at Isaac Bear has changed each of us. To better understand our personal growth, it is important that we remember and reflect on our time at Isaac Bear. So allow me to walk you all through the four glorious periods of the Isaac Bear Early College Eon. The year is 2012, the beginning of the freshman period. The Mars rover, Curiosity, has just landed on Mars. Size Gangnam Style is taking the world by storm. And Will of and Kate of Cambridge have just announced their royal pregnancy. This is the year that we all met, primitive versions of our current forms, facing a new beginning similar to the one we face now. Perhaps a bit scared, perhaps a bit excited to see what high school would have to offer. Despite any misgivings we might have felt, we powered forward while forming new friendships with our peers. Together, we survived many arduous trials, including Mr. Kelly's foam cannons, sentence diagramming with Mr. Abraham, and the infamous Seven Habits book and digital portfolio project headed by Ms. Saka Linsky. <laughs> Occasionally, we would also receive calls from Mr. Sutton describing the dreadful bear attacks that would plague local science and math competitions. <laughs> Our first year at Isaac Bear, the first Isaac Bear period, exposed us to a greater workload than we had ever encountered and required us to adapt by improving our work ethic considerably. Next began the sophomore period of 2013, marked by the appointment of Pope Francis, Edward Snowden's leak of NSA information, and the release of the first Sharknado movie. <laughs> this year, many of us were tested with a level of work truly more intense than freshman year, which tried our coping methods and challenged our organizational skills. We were also met with higher expected standards, which tested our work ethic and ability to follow instructions, and proved true the idea that it takes less uh, time to do things right 
than to explain why you did it wrong. Despite these obstacles, I fondly look back on the tales of skiing and Vermont for Mr. Spear, the lunch table pig dissections with Mr. Bishop, and the constant chant of oi, as, a, amos, ice on, that could be heard emanating from whichever room Ms. Starnes was teaching in at the time. <laughs> also, let's not forget Ms. Griffith's spirited one-woman reenactments of historic events, and the walls of Ms. Mickleff's room, forever hidden behind chart upon charts discussing Great Gatsby's connection to the American dream. As the sophomore period drew to a close, so too did the underclassmen era, and we transitioned to a fresh new environment, UNCW campus. While the underclassmen era tested our work effort, the upperclassmen era tested our initiative in an environment that consisted of far less structure than we were accustomed. We were given some guidance, but generally we were responsible for maintaining our own individual classes without much outside support, and anything we did need, we were responsible to seek out. With more freedoms and less direct guidance, it became clear that success depended in a very large measure upon individual initiative and exertion and could not be achieved except by a dint of hard work. This change in structure makes the junior and senior periods of the Isaac Bear Eon more difficult to generalize for everyone because we all began taking separate academic paths as we started classes at UNCW. Still, we, still, we students would see each other frequently on UNCW campus in uni, accountability with Ms. Hallberry, or in the library study rooms that the Isaac Bear students might as well have owned. <laughs> as we spent time together in smaller groups, our singular identities became more defined. By taking classes based on our own personal interests, we, to, we began to carve our own path. This independence has propelled each of us to discover who we are and to identify our own strengths. So as our grand Isaac Bear Eon draws to a close, I implore you to look back and remember our start. Let us celebrate our triumphs, learn from our mistakes, and thank those who have supported us along our journey. Let us take pride in how far we have come and never forget the student family we have come to love. Congratulations to the class of 2016 and good luck to you all. Thank you. At this time, it is my pleasure to introduce Adam Osama Khatib. Adam has the highest overall GPA of 5.075 and has earned the honor of valedictorian. Adam, please come forward. Adam will attend Cornell University in the fall. I am honored to present Adam Osama Khatib, valedictorian for the graduating class of 2016. Good morning, distinguished faculty, administrators, friends, families, and the graduating class of 2016. It is a time-honored tradition for the valedictorian to stand before his or her fellow classmates and speak of the future. I might as well jump in with some love life advice. To the men of the class of 2016, don't just ask yourself, is she hot, and then marry her. <laughs> You've got to dig a little deeper than that. Marriage is a big step in life. You have to also ask yourself, is she risk half of my life savings hot? <laughs> if you answered yes to that question, then congrats. You found your wife. <laughs> I'm kidding, of course. That joke is incredibly misogynistic and no longer plausible in the 21st century. Okay. That was super awkward. Let's see if I can get this speech right. In all seriousness, today I stand before you unsure of the journey that follows, including my own love life. The past 13 years of our lives have been strictly scheduled with winters, summers, and weekends off and every year beginning in August instead of January. Today marks the beginning of the end of this chapter in our lives. Sure, college follows a relatively similar schedule. However, no longer will someone else be held accountable for our success or well-being. For today, that burden falls on us. We have been given great freedom to make our own choices, but with this great freedom comes great responsibility. We live in a country that offers a plethora of opportunities for each individual to be successful. 
We also live in a country that prides itself in the fact that there is no limit to one's success. As we embark on the next step in our lives, the potential to attain such success becomes all the more realistic. The American dream is a concept that describes immigrants who came to the States in search for a better tomorrow. Although this is applicable in today's world, the American dream is not exclusive to immigrants. I believe that happiness is the most accurate measure of a person's success. Happiness is the epitome of the American dream. So by appreciating our life, by seeking to become our own personal best, and by living life to its fullest, no matter the challenge, each one of us could live his or her personal American dream and thus experience a happy life. The concept of an unknown tomorrow is frightening, but if we take this fear and turn it into ambition, we can thrive. However, we shouldn't get too ahead of ourselves. Too many times, people's ambitions fade away before they can accomplish their goal. It is important to sometimes take a step back and chill out so you don't burn out. Ferris Bueller once said, life moves pretty fast. If you don't stop and look around once in a while, you can miss it. It sounds cliche, but we will never be this young again without any real responsibilities. So why not take advantage of this time and appreciate the present? I'm just saying you should have a treat yourself kind of day instead of worrying about that exam in three weeks or that job you need to land in four years. Secondly, I always ask for you to be content but never satisfied. This may seem contradictory, but bear with me. Each of us has accomplished so much in these past four years, and each of us should be proud of those accomplishments, and each of us should continue to strive for more success. I don't doubt for a second that each one of us will prosper in the future and live fulfilling lives, but our full potential will only be reached if we continue our hard work. Today, we will receive our diplomas, but we won't be any smarter than we were yesterday. We spent four years learning lessons through our hard work, and I urge you to do the same for the rest of your life. Learning is not about the outcome, but how you arrive at the outcome. Learning is a process. The hindsight that comes with wisdom is realizing that the process was what it was all about. Whether the process is academic or professional, this is where the memories occur. The outcome, or final prize, is actually over in an instant. What we will remember from these past four years is our process of becoming who we are today, and this is what we celebrate. Today is one moment, our prize. I hope each one of you will take away the value of your hard work, and I hope that you guys will keep close to heart the necessity of the process and the importance of your path. Never be satisfied, never stop working hard, and never stop learning. Isn't it amazing to realize that the greatest accomplishments derive from the greatest and most outlandish risks imaginable? Think of how senseless it sounds to send a person to the moon. Yet, the United States was able to accomplish this remarkable feat 47 years ago. Or isn't it incredible to think back on how Mark Zuckerberg dropped out of college to develop one of the greatest inventions of all time, Facebook? American ideals can be universal, as J.K. Rowling, a single mother on welfare, struggled to find a publisher for the first Harry Potter book. She did not let obstacles stop her. Instead, she went on to create one of the most influential aspects of pop culture. If you take a risk tomorrow, you're probably not going to find yourself on the moon or develop the next Facebook. In fact, you may hit some obstacles. However, you should welcome struggle as a learning opportunity and one that you can overcome. The obstacles you face and overcome in life will become your process to your path of success. My father arrived in the United States with $20 in his pocket in search of the American dream. That was 34 years ago, and he has never regretted that risk. Even foolish risks should sometimes be taken. It is always a win-win scenario. Either you fail and learn something, or you succeed. Whether you fail or succeed, you're going to have a great story to tell your kids. Appreciate your life, never be satisfied, and always take risks. With all that being said, I'd like to thank some people without whom I'd probably be homeless and definitely not be graduating today. <laughs> My siblings for their priceless advice, hey them, you're the only person in the world who I'd let take away the perks of being the youngest child away from me. My parents for sacrificing so much. Baba, thank you for being the perfect example. And Mama, you're such a positive influence on my life. The class of 2016, along with the teachers who made the past four years truly unforgettable in every sense of the word unforgettable, good and bad. <laughs> thank you. Right now would be the perfect time to thank my girlfriend. However, as most of you probably know, I don't have a girlfriend. 
so much for that love life advice. We can just blame it on cultural barriers. <laughs> Despite not having a girlfriend, I do have to give a special shout out to Tyler, who has been my... <laughs> Tyler has been my best friend for the past four years and definitely a friend for life. Thanks. <laughs> I'd like to end this with a quote by our all-time favorite philosopher and old school rapper, 50 Cent. As he once said, go ahead and switch the style up. If they hate, let them hate. Just watch the money pile up. <laughs> Class of 16, congrats, thank you, and good luck. At this time, I'd like to introduce Dr. Kathy Barlow, Interim Vice Provost and Senior Associate Vice Chancellor at the University of North Carolina, Wilmington. We value her leadership and support and are pleased she is able to be here with us today for this momentous occasion. Dr. Barlow, please come to the podium for a few remarks. <clears throat> It's an honor to be here today and talk about this partnership with UNCW and New Hanover County Schools. It's been a good partnership and I don't think any of us realized all of the success that this school would have and has had in the last 10 years. And we are very proud of that. We're so glad that 13 of the 53 students are coming to UNCW and um, we welcome you with open arms, so uh, come on. Um, Congratulations to the parents who helped you get here. Do you all mind giving them a round of applause? And congratulations to you students for furthering the reputation of Isaac Bear School. And we are so proud of you and congratulations to you from UNCW today. Okay, graduates, today is a day of celebration. We celebrate how well your hard work has paid off at Isaac Bear and UNCW. Over the past four years, much of your success can be attributed to goal setting, increased responsibility, doing your best at all times, no matter the challenge, showing gratitude and valuing time spent with family and friends. As a result of your committed efforts, the class of 2016 has earned $1,244,190 in scholarships. I applaud all you have accomplished. And today I would like for you to join me in also applauding your family, friends, and teachers who have supported you along the way so that you could experience such success. I'd like to share with you some wise words spoken by Erskine Bowles, former president of the 16 campus UNC system entitled Set Goals for Yourself. One, do not overpromise. Determine your limits and stay within them. Two, do quality work at all times. Never feel you can get by with anything less than your very best. Three, say thank you over and over. Your appreciation of life around you can never be expressed too much. Four, be creative. You can improve on most things. Never hesitate to express your ideas. Five, take time to add to the woodpile. It is your responsibility to add to the community in which you live and work. Make it a better place because of you. Six, save time for your family. Memories are what one survives on during all the ups and downs of life. It has been my privilege to be your principal this year and on behalf of the faculty and staff at Isaac Bear Early College High School, I wish all of you much success in your future endeavors. Congratulations, graduating class of 2016. <laughs> now I present the class of 2016 to Mr. Donald S. Hayes, Chairman of the New Hanover County Schools Board of Education. Mr. Hayes, the graduates of Isaac Bear Early College High School who sit before you 
have met all graduation requirements as prescribed by the state of North Carolina and New Hanover County Schools. They are ready to receive their diplomas. Good morning. I hope you can hear me. I'm fighting an upper respiratory problem. I'm not contagious. Uh, I just don't sound, because I don't generally sound very good anyway, but uh, this doesn't help matters any. But uh, on behalf of the Board of Education, I want to also congratulate the graduates this morning. Also, congratulations to the parents. We all, uh, we're all celebrating together. This is truly an exciting weekend. Not only is it your graduation, but this also is Memorial Day weekend. As you know, Monday is Memorial Day. It's a day set aside to honor those that have served this country over the years and gave their lives in the defense of this country. So I also wanted to offer you some advice today, some advice I know you've heard from many others as you graduate. But then I also want to tell you a story that I kind of put together some historical facts, which is a little game I used to play many years ago when I was a history teacher. It's kind of interesting where if you put things together in a little story form, your students have a tendency to, to better remember the, the subject that you're, you're talking about. Uh, but the advice as far as graduation that, that I'll tie in there is that, you know, get out there, work hard, do what's right, right? You hear these things? Persevere, charge. Graduates, you've heard that, right? And you're going to do that, correct? I don't know. Okay. <laughs> Let me tell you my little story. It's a true story. It's a true story. It's about a young lady named Genevieve. Her friends called her Jenny. Like most young ladies, Jenny had a boyfriend. His name was Bill. Who was it? Didn't have a girlfriend. Well. She had a, a boyfriend. <laughs> um, Bill, Jenny's boyfriend, was very patriotic. He wanted to serve his country. So what did he do? He joined the Navy. Of course, you'll never know why I'm, I'm a little partial to certain branches, but uh, he joined the Navy. He wanted to go off and see the world and serve his country. Well, Bill happened to be on a battleship called the USS Arizona. And the morning was December the 7th, 1941, when all of a sudden a surprise attack was launched in the USS Arizona with 1,177 men on board sank. So Jenny lost Bill that day. She was devastated. Her brothers, she had some brothers, they were very upset. They also wanted to serve their country and avenge Bill's death, so they did what they thought was right. They went, and they also joined the Navy. They wanted to serve together. That was the condition they set. They wanted to serve together, the brothers. Now, the historians in the crowd, I think you've already picked up on where, where my story is going, right, Dr. Markley, as a former history teacher? Uh, well, they got their wish. <coughs> They served on a light cruiser, the Junoa. And in 1942, less than a year after Bill's death, the Junoa was hit by a torpedo, and in 20 seconds, the ship was gone with 687 men on board, including Jenny's brothers. Back home in Waterloo, Iowa, which is the hometown, Jenny and her parents, Thomas and Alita, Sullivan were waiting to hear from the brothers. A Navy lieutenant commander came to the door. This was not a good sign. They knew it was bad news. And the father asked the lieutenant commander, which one? He knew it was bad news about one of his sons. The lieutenant commander looked at him, he said, all five. Well, there were five brothers, George, Frank, Joe, Matt, and the baby brother was Al. They were known as the Fighting Sullivans. And I'm sure some of you in the audience, particularly the, the older people, and I can't see that far back, so I'm, I'm not going to ask for a show of hands, but I'm sure some of you have seen that movie, The Fighting Sullivans. 
As you graduate and as we celebrate Memorial Day, let us remember all those that gave their lives serving this country so that we may be here today enjoying the freedoms we enjoy and taking part in, in this graduation. Now, one more thing. Whatever happened to Jenny? See, mo most movies don't get into that. Well, I was interested in that, and I did some research on Jenny. Guess what Jenny did later in life, a few years later? She joined the Navy. So that was five brothers and one sister and her boyfriend. She also joined the Navy and served her country and went on to own a very large farm, several farms in California, had children married, children, grandchildren, and great-grandchildren. She lived up to 1975, a very prosperous lady. Many honors were bestowed on the Sullivan brothers by their hometown in Waterloo, Iowa. And also the U.S. Navy named two destroyers after the brothers. And both had the same motto, we stick together. Now I know one of your classmates has already graduated and gone and is in boot camp, I guess. Uh, but I always at graduations like to recognize those that are going into the military. He is already gone. But it is Memorial Day weekend, so at this time I would like to ask all veterans in our audience, all active duty military, if you would please stand and be recognized. Thank you very much. Now graduates, there are many ways to serve your country. I have given you one example. There, there are many other examples that I could give. There are many ways other than the military. So my question to you is how will you serve? Now by the power vested in me by the state of North Carolina and New Hanover County, and upon certification that these students have met the graduate, graduation requirements, as outlined by the state of North Carolina, I deem that these students are eligible for graduation. Mrs. Bell, please prepare your students to receive their diplomas. And the last thing I'll say to you is good luck and may God bless you. Thank you, Mr. Hayes. The moment has come that we have anxiously awaited, the presentation of diplomas. I would like to ask Dr. Tim Markley, superintendent, to come forward to assist with the awarding of diplomas. Parents, please refrain from coming down to the front to take pictures so that everyone can see um, each student receive their diploma. Ashton John Aaron. <laughs> Kayla Claire Abedi, cum laude. <laughs> Ashley Michelle Baylock. <laughs> Destiny Bovair. Brianna Dion Brotnix, summa cum laude. <laughs> Sophia Lorraine Cervantes, cum laude. <laughs> Tyler Ace Champ, magna cum laude. Michael Andrew Dini, summa cum laude.
Mia Grace DiCarlo, summa cum laude. Gabrielle Whitney Despain, summa cum laude. Hannah Nicole Faircloth, cum laude. Kareen Marie Fennin. Alexis Marie Gamester, summa cum laude. Jacob Lee Grossman. James Maxwell Gustafson. Riley Jane Harris, summa cum laude. Chloe Dawn Henderson. Christopher Balmori Hernandez. <laughs> Chanel DeShayla Holiday. John Parker Hug. Jasmine Marie Hughes. Aaron Michael Johnson, summa cum laude. Sarah Finch Katz, summa cum laude. Adam Osama Khatib, summa cum laude. Landon Brian Kraft, cum laude. Skylar Edwin Marshburn. Kennedy Amia McDowell. <laughs> Dustin Tan Nguyen. Lemma Nasir O'Day. Jada Noor Ozuku. Elizabeth Diane Palmer, cum laude. Nancy Parada Garcia, summa cum laude. Juan Diego Parada Mendez. Flor Pina Medina. Aubrey Jacob Reibenbart, cum laude. Carlos Miguel Rivera, Jr. Dylan James Roberts, summa cum laude. Patrick Blaine Sackey. Emily Hope Stanley. Cypress Naya Taylor. Trey Douglas Lamar Tolbert. Arthur Emil Townen, cum laude. Stacy G. Vasquez. Maya Vexler, cum laude. Olivia Hope Walsh, magna cum laude. Casey Danielle White, cum laude. 
Anthony Lamar Williams. Ethan Paul Wilson. Morgan Alexis Wilson, summa cum laude. Alvina Ji Jun Young, summa cum laude. Colette Annabelle Young, cum laude. Please join me in re-welcoming Maya Vexler to the stage for the recitation of the Isaac Bears alma mater. Graduates, please stand and remain standing. Memories of happy days now linger in each heart. Our friendship bond will never break, though very soon we part. Here we learn to live, to love, to think, and to serve our fellow man, to follow down the path unknown and make our lifelong plans. So here we stand, O Isaac Bear, we're one in brotherhood. Our thoughts of you will live on always as we strive for truth and good. Graduates, it is a customary symbol of earning, after earning your diploma, to turn your tassels from right to left. At this time, please turn your tassels. Congratulations, class of 2016. We wish you the best in the challenges that are ahead of you. We ask that families, guests, Please remain standing and inside your rows and allow the graduates to recess out. Thank you and have a wonderful Memorial Day weekend. <laughs>